All right, so I'm going to do an install of OES 11 domain services for Windows. And so like any other OES product, it starts by clicking on the add-on products in this the uh, software section. You can do this at the time of installing o the SLES part also. Uh, it's up to you. So we're just going to do uh, off of our install source. We've got a video on setting up an install source if you're interested. It makes it so much easier to do installs to update or to add on products uh, that you need to later on um, instead of going and looking to find a, a CD or, or DVD it's all right there you've got it set up on a, an, another server so what we're gonna do is just select domain services for Windows uh, when we select this most likely we're gonna get an a uh, warning that there's some SIFs or Samba packages that are already installed. Sure enough, there, we, there they are. As you can see, it's going to replace these. Uh, these are the kind of the standard ones. And nor, in the previous versions, these probably would have uh, stayed. But in OS 11, all Samba packages, uh, not just a few, but all of them are going to be uh, self-contained. They're going to be Novell OS Samba packages. Uh, that way, it, it, it uh, keeps it consistent it's regularly updated if there's a security issue or whatever what have you that, that comes up it will be updated just like the the SLES uh, Samba packages are um, updated so it draws off this the same source uh, they get the same fixes it's just gives uh, development some time to make sure that that uh, testing is proper testing is done before it's officially uh, released so uh, Giving, give, basically giving some control. So you can see when we select it, we've got a few pieces uh, that are automatically selected. A temptation is to remove this DNS. Talked about it before. Do not remove the DNS. This is extremely important. It has to be there, at least on this version. I mean, next, the next version most likely won't have to have DNS on there, but uh, you still need to set up a DNS server. So we're just going to select everything right there. If you'd like to add on a few things, there's like iManager that can be added on, iPrint. Um, those are pretty safe. Otherwise, uh, I, I would just leave it as the default and uh, go from there. So it's just going to go through, install the RPMs, download, install it, and then uh, we'll get to the configuration. Okay, we're now done with the install of the RPMs. We're at the configuration stage. This is the the YAS part of the configuration. So we'll default with a new tree. We are going to do an existing tree since we're installing, to an ex we're installing the DSFW into an existing tree. If we did a new tree, it would set up a DC object. So it would, it would set up a, um, in this case, where our domain is uh, OES11.LAN. It would set up a, a DC equals OES11, comma DC equals LAN. Uh, we're not doing that. We're doing an existing tree, so we'll just use our existing structure. Uh, I would recommend removing the install secret source unless you know for sure that you're going to be using it. You can always go back and install it later, but really it doesn't remove very well. So I, I would, if you're not going to use it, don't install it. Go on to our next. So we're going to put in the a, re a, a server that has a replica of the, the, the partition that we're mapping the domain to and also replica of root. So that's, you really want to make sure it has both of those to have a successful install. But particularly it has to have a replica of the container that you're installing the server at. So from there we have our uh, admin. I know it says a comma there but it's actually a dot. It actually well, it doesn't really matter what you put dot or comma it will take it and continue on it will adjust it to a dot uh, we so this is this is our tree admin need supervisory rights to root and supervisory rights to the container where you're mapping uh, the um, the domain to here just take the default this div location really don't change that uh, I would suggest if you don't don't have an NTP server you're using you can use a uh, pool ntp.org uh, that works really good but you definitely you should have an NTP server you're using. Uh, directory agent, standard uh, install piece. We already have an uh, eDirectory agent. If we look at uh, this is our eDirectory server. If we less the uh, the Etsy SSL or um, 
sorry, not SSL, uh, slp.conf. We look for a server. Sorry, uh, sorry, DA. If we look for DA, so we have it set up right here at the bottom. This is our scope. Uh, D, the DA, um, it's true, it is a DA. This has got all the, the information right here for, for uh, to let us know that our existing server is set up with the default sc uh, scope of default. So we're going to keep that, point it there to that server for SLP. I'd recommend doing that. This it doesn't really matter what you select. It's going to install the uh, SAS GSS API method and uh, uh, challenge response and and uh, MB5 anyway. But you can select all. A lot of people do. It, it doesn't hurt. Now this now we're on to the actual configuration of the the domain part. So you can see we have three options: new domain with the new forest, new domain and existing domain services for Windows Forest. So this would be a child domain you're setting up, or a new domain controller. So you have maybe one or two or it doesn't matter how many domains you have in an existing domain that's set up. You're setting up a domain controller. So we're doing, this is a brand new install, first one in the, the tree. So we're setting up a forest, setting up a domain. That's what we're going to select. As you can see here, the domain name, it's all grayed out. Can't change it. Again, that was read from the Etsy host file. So between the Etsy host file and that host name file, remember, they have to be exactly the same, the domain name. Case, it's not case sensitive. As far as which was which, as you saw, one was uppercase, one was lowercase, it still populates it. If one was different, this would not be populated. And you would know to go and make that modification, and, and uh, then this would and then just go back, go forward, and then it would be populated if you, if you ran into that issue. So here, uh, the NetBIOS name, you can really name it anything you want. It cannot be, you need it to... Uh, adhere to Microsoft's standards for for naming so it can't be like all numbers or or old symbols it does have to have at least a mixture it has to have some some uh, letters in there as well all right so we say next and we're gonna put in our password for that we want to set for our administrator user and you can see it's administrator CN users DC OES 11 DC LAN Really, this is mapped to the O equals Novell, so this is going to be underneath O equals Novell. Here we is our container we're mapping to, so O equals Novell. Again, make sure it's partitioned off; it's all set. That's set up. So we're we're setting that up. If we had Novell uh, uh, Kerberos, Novell KDC, we're, and we wanted to migrate to that to DSFW, here's an opportunity opportunity to do that. We have a password policy that was already set up. I didn't set one up yet, but uh, we, I can show you how we can change it later on. Uh, but this is your option to, if you have a password policy, to retain that password policy. Matter of fact, well, you know what? Let's go and set a password policy real quick. So if we go in, go into passwords, uh, password policies. We're just going to create one. I would recommend having a password policy, so we'll just call it the uh, uh, Novell Novell policy. So it's just that meaning it's mapped to uh, password policy at o equals Novell. So we'll just do the default options on it next. Um, we won't expire it when the administrator changes the password. And we're going to assign it to our O equals Novell. So if you don't have a password policy assigned at this level, uh, it, it's not required. But I would recommend having one. And really, I'd have it set up beforehand, have users logging in using it. That way, their universal password is created. Uh, so now we can select this. If we Again, if we did not have a password policy, don't select this. It, um, there are ways to remedy it, but uh, it could cause problems. So we're going to say next. We're going to get a warning that we're mapping to this O equals Novell for the domain. We're going to say yes, and we're going to get a warning that 
we have this password policy um, that we basically we've checked this retain faster policy if we didn't have that checked we wouldn't get this warning so we'll say next oh, there's our common proxy we can we'll go ahead and keep that we do have a, a DNS server set up right here on the tensile so let's retrieve that information and you can see it's the locator object all this is is in another is in this uh, DNS container and we got the proxy user right there so uh, we're gonna go ahead and use that information it will set up another zone with the same name but it will be in a different location we'll go over later on on how to merge those zones um, so we, but since we do have a Novell DNS server in the tree we want to use that same locator object that is the big thing you do not want to have two or more locator objects in your tree unless you know what you're doing and then we're just going to get our uh, the the summary. Um, you might want to go and uh, you can if you want to uh, change something for LUM. Say besides just uh, the uh, it used to be called Webin. It's the I can't think of the name of it right now. The service the F S F C B service that replaces the Webin. It uh, besides having that enabled, let's go in and enable. We'll select everything. So that they're all LUM enabled, you can it's you can do it by manually or or with the the wizard, but it's it's all all right there. All right, that's it. We're all set, ready to go. Say next, and it will go ahead and do the install or the configuration. So about forty three percent is when it gets to e directory. That you might run into something there. Uh, there was that the uh, and then at. Uh, uh, ninety-three percent. Those are the if you're going to run into something during the YAS piece, usually it's at uh, one of those sections, the configuring e directory or configuring uh, the DSFW. And uh, if you watch the 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 uh, uh, video on preparing to install DSFW, you know how to avoid uh, getting the the one specific error, the fifty-five error or error, error on line fifty-five. Can't remember the exact title, but it's this this. Uh, right here uh, basically it's dealing with that one uh, one twenty seven zero zero two address um, if you have that removed like we do and you still get it just modify this file uh, as so and continue okay now we're on to the ninety three percent we'll see if we get uh, through that uh, possible error that that uh, like, that I, I talked about with this one Ted uh, this is if you're going to run into it, this is where you, you'll hit it. So if we get past that, then we're pretty much done, and at least with the YAST piece. Then we're on to the provisioning wizard, which will be another video that uh, I'll show you. Okay, so we did get that error. If we look at the details, we can see exactly where it came. Like I said I've seen it a couple of times, even when you have the the zero zero uh, two removed. Uh, ba basically, we're getting that uh, the same thing. Uh, cannot oh cannot uh, connect as administrator. So this is again dealing w right here. Cannot basically connect as our administrator. So we're going to go into this file right here and modify it. So let me pull it up. Oh, uh, vi. There it is. If we look for, let's do local host. As we can see, this is the same file name right here. Uh, we're just going to change this to insert 127.0.0.1, save, and then we'll continue to run the install. Re reconfigure again. Okay, we got through that, and now it's on to the configuring LUM. It will uh, continue to go through that, through the other LUM and, and DNS, making sure that everything is all configured, and then uh, and then we'll be done. So if you do run into that issue, remember this tid. It is in that prepare to help, uh, the prepare to install DSFW. There is a link to this. Uh, this is the tid number. Also, have this on hand. Be prepared to use it. Like I said, this sometimes helps removing it, but I have seen it where it doesn't always do it. So uh, we'll uh, we'll pick this up in the next video. Thanks for watching.